Sylvia George, Health and Safety Project Coordinator. Welcome to Spotlight. Good to see you. Yes, thanks for being here. Having me yes, again. Yes, indeed. So <laughs> In a different format. Yes. It's so always good to have you. Uh, we've been hanging out on the radio for a while, but now you're on, 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 on Spotlight. Mm -hmm. Health and safety in the workplace. This yes. is something that happens every year. This is uh, what health and safety uh, day coming up. Well, um, on the 28th of April every year, um, we observe in the Virgin Islands International Labor Organization World Day for Health and Safety at Work. And that's on 28th of April. Um, the theme this year is Join in Building a Culture of Prevention in Occupational Safety and Health. And in addition to that, um, we have added a sub-theme. Um, Go ahead. And the sub-theme we have spot the hazards. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to know what is a hazard, how to identify it. A hazard is an unsafe condition or process that could cause injury, illness, or death to an employee. It can also cause loss and damage to the workplace. So the facilities could be burned down, piece of equipment could be broken, and that would, you know, slow down production. Um, each profession, regardless of what work we do, it brings with it a certain amount of hazards and um, associate, associated risks. So we're looking at different type of hazards in different type of in different workplaces. For example, slip, chip, and fall hazards. They're all around us, you know, and they can be caused by fluid, fluids on the floor, or footwear, the dust, you know, and debris, debris, mm -hmm. the poor lighting, the cards. Hey, yes, so we got some safety <laughs> sorry, hazard here, sorry, huh? Exactly. <laughs> Steps, the walkways, and this can result in um, serious injuries if somebody were to trip and fall, you know, okay. cause injury and, you know, be injured. So you have the activities surrounding this day coming up on the 28th? Or the how, 28th. How, how is this being absorbed? Okay, well, this year is going to have a slightly different twist. Um, there's a committee under the BVI Health and Wellness Advisory Council. Mm -hmm they'll be launching the Workplace Health and Safety Wellness Committee. So they'll be having a short ceremony to launch the committee to the public. What that means that from this year, well, let me go back a bit. The government through the Department of Human Resources, Health and Safety Unit, we have been organizing the events for the past, this year will be six years up to last year, from 2009. Mm -hmm. So from this year now, we, we launched this com committee, and then I guess from this year forward, they'll be taking it forward. And the purpose of that is to, I guess, comply with the International Labor Organization, that to, you have a three-pronged approach. You have government, you have labor, and organization and employees mm -hmm. combined, you know, trade unions and so, to push for better working conditions better workplaces and all that entails, whether safety, the health of workers, and you know, making it as um, safe for workers as possible. And that means wherever people work or employed, you yeah, have def decent workplaces. Okay. So you're going to have a ceremony? A short a ceremony. A short ceremony. And then to launch a committee. And then what's going to happen? And in addition to that, the government side, which would be the different departments, we normally have different um, departments exhibiting events or um, based on a theme, which is joining building a culture of prevention and using the sub-theme, spot the hazards, assess the risk with those uh, um, hazards. So you're going to have open houses in the various departments? No, we're going to have uh, uh, the uh, breezeway. Uh, uh, exhibit. Exhibits. We have different departments. We're um, we hoping mm. to have public works, um, water and sewage. Um, and so, and those, and those departments, well, those, 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 yet, those, are high, those are high risk, those are high risk, let uh, me high hazard uh, <laughs> departments, right? Yes. Electricity. Go ahead, you go. Okay. Um, BVI and Fire and Rescue, Shipping Registry, Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Fisheries, Human Resources, which be Health and Safety Unit, mm -hmm. um, Waste Management, Disaster dis Management, Employee Relations Unit. Environmental Health Division and 
we have some statutory bodies will be also taking part. Um, New Life Foundation, Peter Island Resort and Spa, Right Way Phone Markets, HLSCC, and the Tourist Board, and a few others. This is going to be a big, a big event. You it's have a, a big lot, event have a lot of because most of these that I mentioned in non-government, they are also part of the committee. Mm -hmm. So it's a you know it's a tripartite um, organization now taking this project forward. Okay, and this is going to all be in the breezeway. In the breezeway and on the balcony. In of the, the central administration building. Okay. Okay, the ceremony is maybe last for 45 minutes to an hour at the most. And after that, we have the exhibits continuing until about 2 o'clock. And that's going to start from what time? To well, say 9.30. So from 9.30 until about 10.30, you have the ceremony. And then shortly after this, the exhibit. Would, and um, persons going to be free to walk around? Well, we are the inviting the public to, to come to, and, to come and, and look get at as much information as possible to um, identify some of the hazards in workplaces, mm -hmm. um, the risks associated with those um, hazards. Um, maybe they'll be educating on how to find safer ways to prevent or to eliminate some of those hazards and to be safe every day. And all of that's going to be exhibited. All the information is going to be there at the at from the different not, by the campus, from the different, different departments. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, we don't have trade unions here. And so looking out for the safety of employees, uh, rest with, whose responsibility is that? From the, in, on, in the, on the government side? I think it's the Labor Department. Because they have the labor code and they have to promote it and make sure that um, employers comply. And this is in keeping with the International Labor Organization exactly. uh, relationship right. with, the, with, with labor departments around the world. Mm -hmm. Because the labor, International Labor Organization had asked countries to implement a national legislation mm -hmm. and policies, regulations to, that would govern workplaces, make them safe. Okay. So it's just a matter of um, compliance with labor code and whatever international conventions they're in place because okay. uh, we you know you, you, you come out uh, once a year well and for we, us yeah we talk it about was once a year but we do other things during the course of the year well, we have workshops mm -hmm. we have um different sessions you know and we talk to explain to explain to persons yes. how to make the, the, the working environment safer exactly yeah. and we use the theme that you know, that is um, promoted by the International Labor Organization. Yeah. But I mean, as, a, as, a, as an employer, what motivates me to make sure that I have a safe workplace? It's good business. If you have safe employees, you have motivated employees, mm -hmm. and you reduce your time off, um, your sick days off, your time off, you know, your employees being sick or having to request time off for sick days, you know. So you'll have persons on the job Practically all the time, unless they absolutely have to. But if you not, if you don't have a, a policy in place where persons, um, their health and their safety is safeguarded, then mm -hmm. you are, you know, you're open for persons are always calling in sick. They are sick because of the mold in the environment. They are sick because they got injured because of poor work practices, poor habits, you know, yeah. poor housekeeping, you know. But you know, I'm not. I, I don't really care. You know about having. But you a, should because I, I, don't, I, I don't really care about having a, a safe environment uh, for my employees. I just want them to come to work, um, produce well, um, goods and services, so I can make money. And I don't want to spend money on keeping the place clean and and making sure that everything is safe. Uh, I mean, you know, so what's going to make me do that? As, 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 aside from my good bis my good business sense are there any is there any legislation that uh, enforce any health and safety laws in the workplace I think there's the, there's a provision there for in a labor code for employees employers mm -hmm. to ensure that the workplaces are safe as reasonably practical okay and so and, there I mean, and there are regulations and penalties I mean I, I, I'm asking because it seems to me, mm -hmm. right, without uh, uh, advocate, 
Mm -hmm. and let me use that term. Without an advocate for laborers, for persons in working in, you know, in, 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 in a workplace, in a work environment, there is no motivation for an employer to provide the safest. Of course, the employer himself has to work in the place, perhaps, and he might want to have certain things a certain way and, and, and certain safety measures in place. But uh, short of that, there is nothing uh, to enforce or to make sure that an employer or an establishment or business establishment uh, has in place uh, safety at, 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 it, at, it, at its core. Yeah, that's why it's so important. Well, we don't do it here, at least not yet. But mm -hmm. I guess we work on it slowly. But in other countries, you have labor unions, trade unions, and they fight for the welfare of the workers. Right. It's and that's why I say, short of, short of, and that's what I meant when I say an advocate, short mm -hmm. of an advocate, right. um, mm -hmm. should, shouldn't we, as, uh, as, as, as a labor department, as a government, uh, if, we, if we don't really, if we are afraid to have trade unions and, and, and labor organizations in the territory, and we feel that uh, they might, it might be an economic drawback to have those kinds of institutions, to have those kinds of organizations, uh, shouldn't we as a government then be making sure that it is a certain level of safety in the workplace so that employees are not uh, injured and in, 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 in disregarded? Well, I would say it's necessary to have some sort of group organization. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what name you call it by. Mm -hmm. Because um, when you group together, you get things happen. So because you the government, is, because the I government know, is not adequate enough to make to protect the, um, the labor. Well, for us, well, I guess that's why I'm here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but on a whole, we have employees that complain. You'll hear one talk about this and one talk about that. But if they would sit down and have a group and put their um, energies together to inf get some sort of redress, group, redress for their mm -hmm. concerns. It would, it would mean a lot. Well, so you're saying then, in essence, that right now employees don't have a source of redress because the Labor Department is, I mean, you're making it sound like the Labor Department is ineffective. I am not saying that. I'm not, I know you're not saying it, you know, but I'm saying uh, if, you're, if you're advocating for an uh, uh, organization to advocate uh, uh, for, 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 the la for labor, for the laborers, uh, where the labor department should be uh, the functional advocate. Okay, then, we, then we then we then we be saying that the, the labor department needs to, uh, to 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 improve its ability and uh, build capacity uh, for 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 law enforcement for safety. Okay, let me go a little further. That I know for within the government service there are some departments. I mentioned some here, mm -hmm. and they have groups of workers that do specific jobs. And the workers would meet me and they would complain that we didn't get this, we didn't get that, because they know that the law, what the law says. You mean they didn't get certain protections? But they say well, we asked for this gear and, and we didn't get it. They asked for protective gear exactly, and they didn't get it. And, okay. get it. Mm -hmm. and we need this, we asked for it, and we didn't get it. I mean, that's what they're telling me, but I don't know exactly what goes on, right? That's what mm -hmm. they're telling me. Um, but something you drive around in town and you see for yourself mm -hmm. whether they have them or not maybe they're not using them but that's another story but how do you get workers to take um, to understand the seriousness of protecting your own personal health because if the breadwinner is um, injured or taken um, ill because of the work they do that becomes a liability not only to the organization but to social security and to all of us in the long to run. To family, to social development, exactly. to the whole territory, to, to the whole, whole community. To all of us. To all of us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because um, your health, when you work in a job, all you're working with is your health. And you should leave at the end of the day with all your fingers and toes and your you know, health in the same way. I don't know, I don't know that there's enough people, and we found out at 3 o'clock, I don't know if there is there there is enough people in the territory that understands uh, what types of safety procedures, mechanisms, equipment, protective gear should be in the environment in which they work. I don't see I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't see personally enough education. 
Uh, is that something that we are going to take a look at uh, from the government perspective to, to increase education uh, about safety in the workplace? Yes, right now we have a draft program that's being um, vetted by senior officers mm -hmm. and hopefully by the end of the year we will have at least a launching to get it out to the service because um, we recognize that within the public service there are um, some gaps that need to be filled I mean, mm -hmm. in terms of safety, in terms of providing the proper safety equipment, education as a matter of fact for employees, employees to um, whatever they're given, that they use it and use it correctly and effectively for their own personal, you know, protection and, and, and safety. safety. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and because, uh, you know, as I said, and you, to you told me that you, you go, you, during the year you, do, you, you engage in other activities, other, other safety, Talks education and, yeah, yeah, activities, yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know, I don't hear about it. Maybe I'm not paying no, attention. No, that's, that's, that's within the survey. We have um, oh, so the departments, they, okay. uh, the but, different but departments. As far as, but as far as public education, uh, how much of that do you? How much of that do you do? Not is that much. something that is that something that you should be taking a look at? Uh, Eventually, but like I'm saying, our group is big and we have a lot of people to deal with. And now it's with the launch of this committee. The whole um, ILO day is going to become a territorial event. Right. Right now, it was just on the government side. We're just doing it for our employees so the, to so educate this new, this new awareness for within the government service for our employees. Now, it will be on a national level, territorial okay. level. Right. So, you'll have more discussions, more debates, and the pros and the cons, and, you know. So, this, this new committee is, has been formed to bring a broader education, broader awareness to the general public exactly. than we've had in the past. So workplaces would have to look at their plans, they have to get their safety um, program in place, the officers train, whatever needs to, whatever PPE or training program needs to be in place, they'll have to make sure that they, you know, for compliance yeah. with the labor code. So in, in uh, education and enforcement is going to be uh, stepped up in up. the workplace, and there's going to be increased. Ma it's going to be increased monitoring, and 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 persons going to be uh, have greater redress exactly. according to the labor code. Yes, because there's a lot of work still to be done. We haven't even scratched the surface as yet. Okay. Yeah. What else you got to say but, um, before we go? <laughs> <laughs> I work with some stuff that I want people to. I okay. work with this. Yeah. I work with, I just want to demonstrate it because we talk about safety, mm -hmm. but we don't take it seriously enough. But if you are given this sort of this equipment, e um, PPE, PPE was PPE, personal protective gear, personal protective gear, on a certain job site, you must wear a hat hat uh -huh. to protect your head. Okay. I mean, that one too small for you. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> it, it can adjust. You do not go on certain job sites without your hat hat if mm -hmm. it's necessary and it's a Particular, requirement. Particularly construction sites. Exactly. Right. But we see it all the time. Yes. This is a vest. Certain um, jobs need this the, 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 to be seen. It's a reflective vest a reflective for, for, for the persons who work in the, 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 street, the street maintenance and, and, and so on. People and you know, maybe working in the evening or the night. Certain jobs require gloves. Mm -hmm. But if you're not Wearing them, how do you protect your fingers? Yes. I mean, we have different types of gloves for different functions to do different mm -hmm. things. What, what kind of gloves are those? Well, these are... Um, I mean, kids. for what, for what, for what? Well, like just, just general you, gloves. Just general gloves. <laughs> so you don't, you don't, yeah, you you don't hold you you your, your fingers, your, fingers. your hand. Yeah. But certain jobs require certain types of gloves. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving them and you're not using them, you're exposing yourself to the, so injuries. To injury, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have something else here too. Um, your respirator. Yes. Step. If you're going to do some painting, Paint. mm -hmm. you have to protect your lungs, your, you know, to from whatever so fumes or dust. Kind of boats your and dusting, kind of your painting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need this to the stop the to, filter from the filter to filter out the, the toxins from coming into your body. Into your, into your system because, yes. you know, it creates a problem later on down the road. Yes. So I'm advising anybody out there <laughs> who are given, if you're given these um, for your own personal protection, to use them because 
Look at me. Whose health am I protecting? Your own. My own, myself, my yes. personal, personal protection. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can't spike the employer if I don't wear them. Yeah, if you get sick, is like, you, if you get sick, is you getting sick. If you get injured, is you getting injured. Yeah. You know, and I can't say, well, how much money I get for losing a finger yeah. when I should have been wearing my gloves. <laughs> you see? That's true. Okay. So basically, um, this is basic, basic stuff. But we want people to understand that if you're giving a personal protective gear, where you get at where all time you get at all times. Yeah. I know within the Rotong area, we see certain um, events happening. And you know that they should be wearing certain stuff, mm -hmm. but you don't see them doing it. Yes. So you know something is going to happen. I mean, Some, a, a beam for a piece of two by four fall on your head, uh, or something you get knocked out, and that's the end of that. Yeah, <laughs> you look like you're ready. You're ready to walk. But I have to say, you know, all in all, I, the, the 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 brothers I see walking on the street, doing the, the paving the roads, and collecting uh, the waste management. Uh, teams that's, that, that's working on the street, I do see them, uh, a, a lot of them in their protective gear. <laughs> I to see so so this, this is to protect your eyes. And, th and, this, is the and this is to protect your lungs. <laughs> I'm not sure if I was correctly. But anyway, it's a breathing apparatus. Mm -hmm. To, yeah, to protect your, to protect your lungs. Uh, okay. You see? But anyway, I'm just going to um, invite persons to come down to the Central Admin Complex on the 20th of, 8th of April. April. At from, nine of seven, from 9 o'clock. Start about 9.30. 9.30. 9.30. Yes, yes. There'll be a brief ceremony Same by way. the um, Workplace Health and Safety, Workplace Safety and Wellness com Committee. Mm hmm which is a part of the BVI Health and Wellness Advisory Council. Yes. And the Department of Human Resources. Well, they'll be having a ceremony and we'll be organizing the, um, the exhibit by the different departments and to then you can educate the public on um, spotting hazards, assessing risks, finding safer ways, and to be safe every day. Sylvia, <laughs> Sylvia Josh, that was great. Thank you very much. That was well done. That was well done. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank coming you. to Spotlight and bringing that really, that's really important information to the public. And I'm hoping that uh, people will go down on April 28th. That's, um, I think, what, week after this? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, go down on April 28th to the Central Admin Complex in the, uh, in the Breezeway to the ceremony, the open ceremony, and to see all the exhibits and learn about safety in the workplace, what the hazards are, what to look for, what kind of protective gear you need so to make sure that you yourself to take responsibility for your own protection. That's the bottom and, line. Yes, and all that information will be there. Thank you very much <laughs> for being my guest on Spotlight. It's been a real Thanks pleasure. For with me. Yes, <laughs> indeed. We always have a good time. Yeah. Next week, we'll be talking about an exciting new business that is mapping the Virgin Islands on GPS system. Uh, soon everyone will be able to turn to, to have turn by turn instructions to get to the places that to any place they want to get to in the Virgin Islands. This development, of course, is going to open up a whole new world uh, here in the Virgin Islands of business, of social activity. It's going to really, really um, be a, a, a great innovation here in the territory where people will be able to have their their little um, GPS gadgets and, 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 and be directed turn by turn to any place they want to go in, 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 the, in the territory. So that's going to be, that's going to be uh, really, really a good, a good discussion. Of course, Spotlight is seen live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. here on JTV Channel 55. It's also seen Sunday afternoons at 2.30. You can watch Spotlight on demand at jtvlive.net. Like our Facebook page, make comments, uh, make suggestions, uh, you know, uh, suggest guests you'd like to have interviewed or topics you'd like to have discussed. We'd be happy to hear from you. I'm Ed Juenka, reminding you that when the spotlight is on, you see the facts. Peace and blessings. Spotlight is brought to you by Tortola Concrete Limited, the National Bank of the Virgin Islands, and CCT Global Communications.